So tonight I'd like to talk about resistant starch and um, I basically I'm just going to give you an overview here hopefully to, to spark your interest in this topic and that you'll look further into it. There's plenty of um, videos on YouTube on the topic that do go into greater detail and also if you do a Google search you'll find lots of information there as well. So what, what are we talking about here? Well, okay, so you have starch, which the body it can pretty much digest most starches, but there's this one kind of starch uh, called resistant starch. And so let's say you eat something that has resistant starch in it, although your small intestine can digest most of the starches, extract the nutrients and convert it into energy, the resistant starch re remains in its structure and it passes through the gut into the large intestine. But that's where it gets exposed to um, the bacteria microbiome. And the microbiomes attach themselves to the resistant starch and start breaking them down. And as they start breaking down the resistant starch and digesting them, they release smaller carbohydrate molecules uh, which then get consumed by other surrounding bacteria. And as the other bacteria starts consuming the smaller molecules of carbohydrates, they start releasing even smaller waste products. And amongst the, those waste products is one called butyrate. And that's where it gets interesting because as the butyrate accumulates in the large intestine, it begins to get absorbed and it can be converted into energy. And not only that, it promotes blood circulation, which keeps healthy cells in the large, which keeps the cells healthy in the large intestine. And it can also, the butyrite can also find damaged cells and cause those damaged cells to trigger a suicide program that would cause the cell to self-destruct basically preventing it from mutating into something larger like cancer. I think that's a pretty good explanation of what is going on. Basically, resistant starch promotes healthy bacteria, which creates this chain reaction of really good stuff that happens in the large intestine. And there are, so, you know, the benefits that, that come from that is that, okay, you have improved intestinal health and function, improves insulin sensitivity, lowers blood glucose, lowers cholesterol, increases satiety, uh, aids in weight loss, and improves sleep. Um, so that's pretty impressive stuff. And when it comes to the area of sleep, I know, actually, I'll, I'll save that one talk about that a little bit later. But now, what foods have resistant starch in them? Well, basically, um, starchy fruits like bananas and plantains. But here's the deal. If you're a fruitarian and you're eating nothing but ripe fruits like ripe bananas, then you're not going to get a very high level of resistant starch. The key is, is you have to eat the bananas green. And I know that goes against the whole fruitarian philosophy of eating your fruit, you know, sweet and ripe. But um, I would highly encourage that if you are eating pretty much 100% fruitarian, that you at least, you know, I don't know, put half a green banana in with your smoothie or something like that. Get some green bananas into your diet and increase your level of resistant starch so that you can promote this healthy bacteria which promotes your overall health. Um, other foods are um, potatoes, raw potatoes. Again, if you cook the potatoes, the problem is, is you now you've degraded the resistant starch, but if you allow the potatoes to cool again, the resistant starch levels rise. So, you know, like potato salad, you, you would get a higher level of resistant starch in that than you would in cooked potatoes. Or, you know, again, you can cut up half a potato or whatever and throw it in your smoothie, um, blend it in with other things. Um, rice as well has resistant starch in it. The same deal though, when you cook it, you degrade the re resistant starch, but if you let it cool, uh, the, re the levels of resistant starch rises again. Other foods are legumes and um, 
grades. And so basically, you know, the story here is that eat a wide variety of fruits and starchy foods like uh, potatoes, rice, legumes, and grains. And you're gonna get a good source of resistant starch in that diet. Um, but if you're, you know, not sure whether you're getting enough or not, there is a shortcut way of doing this. And this is actually something that um, people in the paleo movement practice because, and in fact, this is how I found out about resistant starch. I was just one day, I was kind of bored, you know, and you, you, you're just searching on YouTube, random videos, and yeah, I, I probably, um, you know, typed in starch and just did a random search and came up with resistant starch. And the video I saw was by a couple of people in the paleo movement and they were talking about how they had to introduce resistant starch into their diet because they're, they basically, after practicing a low carbohydrate, high protein diet for a, number, a period of time, I'm not sure how long, they had pretty much starved the good bacteria in their gut. And so the solution for them, rather than eating carbohydrates, was to use unmodified potato starch. And I'm going to sh give you, show you an example here of what, what we're talking about. So here's a glass of water, and this is really easy to do. And I actually experimented with this. I looked up, you know, possible negative side effects of, of taking this, and I can't find any. So it seems pretty benign. I, I, I'm sure if you were to take too much of it, you know, it would probably give you a lot of gas and maybe cause indigestion. But, um, so what do I recommend? Uh, two, I put two tablespoons like this and a glass of water like that. There's, the, there's one tablespoon, there's another one. I stir it up like so. done and there we go I've got my resistant starch now some on some YouTube channels they've recommended doing um, one tablespoon in the morning one tablespoon in the evening some recommend two tablespoons in the morning two tablespoons in the evening you know what experiment with this if you want to try this but um, What's interesting about it, now let's get onto the topic of sleep, improving the quality of sleep. Well, the idea is, you know, you've got all, you, you're basically um, feeding all this healthy bacteria in your gut. And your body being sort of all connected together, I guess, actually, it, it, it affects your sleep as well. So I take this, I don't do this every night, but, um, I've tried doing this, taking this before bedtime, a, a glass of, of unmodified potato starch, and uh, sure enough, um, I can't say it improves my sleep, because I sleep well anyways, but my dreams become more lucid, I find. Not every time, but in many cases, I have really lucid dreams, which is really kind of odd. So. You know, what, what can I say? Um, make sure that you are getting adequate amounts of resistant starch in your diet. So if you are practicing the starch solution, eating a lot of cooked starches, you might want to consider uh, um, introducing, like eating cold potatoes and cold rice. You could eat cold potatoes in a salad, likewise rice, or you can make a rice pudding if you like. Um, and if you're fruitarian, then I would recommend you going against what your, you know, your conventional wisdom of eating nothing but sweet fruits and introduce the occasional green banana. And I think that will pretty much ensure that you're getting the resistant starch that will promote a healthy gut. Oh, look at the screen. It's totally washed out. There we go. It's, uh, it's the time of day I'm getting a lot, you know, the sun is starting to set, so I'm getting a lot of different light coming through the window here. Here it goes again. There we go. 
So, resistant starch, look it up. It's worthwhile and start thinking about are you getting enough in your diet? Take care.